Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be showing you how to break in a glove in about 24 hours. I've kind of tailored it to the softball. Uh, since the pocket's going to have to be a little different, it's going to have to be a little wider uh, for that ball to fill it, fit in there snugly. And also um, probably going to have to get it to close more squarely so that the, ball can, uh, the glove can wrap around the ball. I just want to take this opportunity. Please like, subscribe to the channel. Uh, please let me know if there's any other content you want. Um, I have a first baseman's mitt I'm looking to break in. I also have the catcher's mitt. We're just going to be using some household items here. Got a couple of uh, towels for the floor so when we're working that we don't damage the ball. Got a uh, mallet here to, to work the inside of the glove and, and nice and wide to be really the shape of a softball. Also got a, a weight to work the, uh, the creases and to work the laces. And then I got a bat here that I'll be showing you uh, how I use to really break it in and, and, and develop that bubble in the back to make sure that softball gets securely back there. Um, we'll just get started. And, all right, so here we got the glove, uh, 12 and a quarter inches I mentioned. Uh, as you can see here, we got the two the hinge mark here and also another hinge here. I, I wanna close this finger to finger only because we need a softball to get in there. And then we wanna finger to finger as I build the pocket, like right now you can see, you can barely get this closed. Once I'm done here, you're gonna see how nicely that ball fits in there. So before I use the hot water treatment, just wanna start working the hinges a little bit. So just close it, you're not gonna hurt the glove. Just hit it down, up and down the finger stall. Get a little bit behind here, just loosen everything up. You know, this might've been sitting in a box somewhere and for a long time. So we just wanna loosen up the glove, flip it on the back side. work the same hinge the entire glove. All right, so we got that one a little all right. Now let's turn it over and get the other hinge break point. Work that in. So this is kind of like a pre-break in. As you could already see, I wasn't really able to close it that much. Got about 50% right now. I'm trying not to keep my hands in the glove too much, only because my hands are bigger than the girl that's going to be using it. So I like to work that in a little bit. Now it's time to get the hot water. So let's go grab that and we'll come back. So I like to just let the water run. It's been running about a minute or two. Um, I don't really want to use the microwave or anything like that. I feel like the water's going to get too hot. I'm really looking for an optimum temperature, give or take about a... Uh, Anywhere from 120 to 140, I'm going to use two cups. I should be using most of it to get the front of the back of the glove. Um, if you do want to test it out, got it here. I got a meat thermometer. Let's see what we're at here. So I, I'm assuming most sinks are going to get you up to about 130. So that's where we are a little over. That's, that's a good temperature to get started. So I got my two cups of water, got my glove here. Um, again, you know, I got the water as hot as I could from the faucet. I don't really want to put it in the microwave, get it too hot. Got it to about 130, which should be plenty. Uh, basically, what we're trying to do is get the water on the glove. Don't get it on the inside if you could avoid it. Uh, we're just trying to get a little color change on the glove. I just like to pour a little bit. You don't have to be shy with it. Um, it's okay for the glove to get wet. It is leather. I like to get it on all parts of the glove as much as I can. And you'll notice you'll start to see a little color change in the glove. That's all we're looking for. We're not looking to oversaturate the glove. Um, here's the best expression. See how we got this color here? It's still dry here. So all we're trying to do, try to keep it out of the glove as we can. We get all parts of the glove. Just make sure to get some right on the heel here. A little extra on the heel. And a little extra on the webbing. Now it's time for the hard work. All right, so we got our glove nice and wet now. So really back to the same thing. Work those hinges. I'm gonna go a little harder on this one. Really get the entire glove. Now that it's wet, now that it's wet, it's loosened up the leather. Should make it much easier to the mold. And let's work that heel area. The heel area is really important, especially on a softball glove. Baseball glove, depending if you're wearing it uh, too in the pinky or traditional, might not be as important. 
However, on a softball glove, definitely got to get it. You know, girls' hands are a little smaller. The gloves are a little smaller on the inside. So the heel becomes an important factor of them actually being able to close the ball and close the glove. I like to work as two-step process. So you see a lot of people, they do a one-step, just one kind of break in. I like to break it in, let it sit overnight, let it mold to the ball, then hit it again the next morning. Uh, that's what I've found the most success in, especially with these softballs. So what I like to do is hit the inside of the palm. I'm trying to build that bigger pocket on the inside, flatten everything out. So as you're working this, try not to catch the finger stalls. We're trying to leave these as strong as possible as they create most of, most of the support. I like to use the mallet, since it's the size of the softball, uh, makes it much easier to duplicate. Uh, what I like to use is the bat, um, especially for softball gloves. I'm able to get the back of the pocket as well as, as, well as the entire palm at once. I like to hit that a little bit. Also something else I picked up, we want to make this bubble on the back of the glove. The way I'm doing that is I'm placing the bat right in the back of the pocket, right where those seams are. And I'm really just catching the front. I'm going to get all parts of the, uh, the web. I'm really just trying to extend those laces, extend that leather. Get all parts of that web. Right, we're just trying to stay on the bottom half of the web. The top half of the web, we're just leaving alone. As you can see here, we're already starting to form that bubble back here. That's what we need, especially for a softball to fit in there. See, I got a nice bubble going right there. Um, work that in with the bat even more. Just hit the back of that pocket. working this keep working the top as well I want to keep this loose as well so work that in that got that nice pocket building in the back okay I could get this closed you don't even see the ball anymore so it's really coming along nicely um, at this point I'm done uh, you can wrap it with one of these uh, glove wraps again I'm gonna go finger to finger here um, you can also use a shoelace I've used this plenty of times when I didn't have a wrap. Just wrap up the shoelace. You wanna make sure you're getting it right above the ball, right? So we could create this bubble a little more and wrap it right there. You're gonna let it sit. If you're in a warmer climate, a couple hours in the sun is plenty. If you're not, a dry place indoors, overnight should be, you should do the trick. Thanks and we'll see you tomorrow to finish this up. All right, so we're now at the next day. Let the glove sit overnight. Uh, see, I got the wrap here. Try to keep this as close as possible only because we need the flexion on there. See, the pocket is much more developed now. Uh, however, since it's a softball glove, um, I want to kind of flatten out this open area over here and kind of develop a wider pocket. Um, the back, I'd like to get it a little rounder, the pocket a little bigger. For a baseball break-in, I would say uh, doing the water treatment again is probably not necessary. However, for a softball, it is a technique I like to use. Um, still a little stiff. Um, if you're not gonna go with the second day of water, uh, you could just skip this part and just uh, follow the next part of the video where we go into a little more of the breaking in the glove. A couple of things I picked up uh, through other channels. Uh, got my water ready already, same thing. Faucet as hot as you can get it, let it run for about a minute. As I mentioned, it's about 120, 130 degrees. I'm not going to saturate it as much as I did yesterday. I'm going to go a little less, but same technique. Make sure you get the heel and get the back side of the glove. Try not to get any water on the inside if you can avoid it. Remember, most of the break-in is going to occur while using the glove playing catch. So that's really the last part of this. Get the top as well, top of the web. That comes in stiff from the factory get that as loose as possible. All right, so now we're back at it here. Got the glove. Want to start again with the weight. Get those creases again.
that I showed you yesterday. I want to get this nice and deep, this pocket. now with the second day of water treatment got a much larger bubble back here that's what we're going for we're looking for the pocket for that ball just to sit right in there and something I picked up from the ball king work and catch and fold in the glove use the ground to force the ball closed we're gonna keep working this last step really is to play some catch with the ball that's it i hope you enjoyed the video uh like subscribe if you want to see additional content i got a first base mid a catcher's mid i was looking to break in if that's something you'd like to see please put a comment below and i appreciate you watching have a good day all right i like to head to that glove feel um, it feels soft. It feels better than it was before when it wasn't broken in. And it feels much easier to close and easier to catch? Yeah. Yeah, right there you can see she's closing it all the way. Alright, great. That's just after one day.